Hi everyone, today let's talk about the CPI data. Then we'll go over the Fed futures, then we'll go over the Fed minutes, and then we'll go over the charts because man, this move to the upside did not have any follow through. And then we'll go over my results for the day and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So looking at the inflation data, in case you missed it, CPI came out this morning and headline rates were better than expected, but core came in as expected with a moderate acceleration of 0.1% on the year over year number, but month over month did step down 0.1%. They also mentioned that energy costs fell, food was flat, and used vehicle prices actually declined. And we can see what that looks like here on the charts. So you have core pretty much going flat, stepping up slightly on the year over year number headline continuing to move lower and that trend is consistent to the downside. They mentioned that obviously we are much higher than the 2% that we would like to get to, but it helped that energy went down 3.5% with an unchanged food index. 0.6% increase in shelter costs was the smallest gain since November, which resulted in 8.2% on an annualized basis. So shelter continuing to remain stubborn. Definitely don't want to see that. A lot of people talk about shelter being a big lagging indicator and that this is eventually going to come down once we see the full effects of the right hikes and that we're just not seeing it quite yet, but that remains to be seen. One of the more promising things was used vehicle prices, which declined 0.9% in March, now down 11.2% on a year-over-year -year basis. Looking at the Fed futures, we're basically unchanged, and I'm a little bit surprised about that. After how light the headline numbers came in, I thought we would kind of drift closer to maybe 50-50, but basically we're unchanged from yesterday's numbers. You can see we actually went up 0.1% towards that 25 basis point hike. And if we stay in this range, especially after CPI, we have to expect that that 25 basis points is going to come. And then looking at the June number, then we can expect that pause that everyone's been talking about. You can see a small percent chance of a cut. And that percent actually went up slightly from yesterday's numbers. But the pause number also went up from yesterday's numbers. And really that percent chance is coming out of the 25 basis point hike in June. So still looking at a pause, still looking at a hike. And today's CPI didn't change that. Moving over to the Fed minutes here, these came out this afternoon and usually they don't have a huge impact because they do say almost everything that they're thinking at the FOMC announcements. But now that the minutes came out, it showed that the Fed expects the banking crisis to lead to a recession this year. Obviously, this is a big negative for the markets and this is part of why we saw a major sell-off in the mid-session. They do mention that vice chair for supervision, Michael Barr, announced that the banking sector is sound and resilient, but I think it's pretty clear that we understand there are definitely risks in the system. So they opened with the fact that the banking crisis is likely to reduce the chance of a soft landing if there's any chance of that in the any more. Then they talk about Michael Barr once again. But then they highlight the fact that there's likely to be a mild recession later this year with a recovery over the two subsequent years. And this is really not something that the FOMC has said publicly. They've been maintaining the soft landing slash no landing case. And if markets move to price in a recession, that could definitely present some pretty big downside over the next weeks to months. So this is a pretty big shift here for that the markets do have to price in. And this, in my opinion, is why we didn't see as strong of a rally after the lighter than expected CPI data. Moving on here, they do talk about the fact that the slowing economy should reduce inflation and they expect product and labor markets to slow sharply next year, which then gives them the ability to start reducing their rates, which is what they've been saying for quite a while now. Markets have been saying that we're going to get cut sooner than the FOMC has told us. But they really haven't said that publicly, and I think this is really what they're looking at. If core inflation comes down early next year, that will give them the information that they need to really start reducing rates and easing monetary policy. They also mentioned the fact that there was potential for a half-point raise, but we did have the crisis, which did some of the work for them. And then we had the lighter-than-expectations CPI data here, which also takes a little bit of the heat off the FOMC. And just like we talked about on the Fed rate monitor, it's about a 72% chance that we get another 25 basis points in May. 
Moving over to the charts, starting with the S&Ps here on the 15 minute and the daily chart, you can see that huge candle that we had on CPI came up, tested resistance. We talked about this rally and the potential follow through on the morning report, but it ended up getting rejected very quickly after that video came out and moved much, much lower. I expected to see a little bit of a bounce at 409.29. Ultimately, this level held at least in the short term. And then we came back through it and closed much, much lower on that lower trend line here. And you can see we did close below it. We're down below the 9 EMA on the daily chart. And ultimately, you have to look at these previous lows down around 406 for the next level of support. And then 405.29 was the level I was watching going back to the highs here from 6 March. So a couple of levels to the downside, probably about 1% over the next day or two of downside potential. You can see we were down 0.4% here today. And if we move down another three points, that's going to be pretty close to that 1% down over the next two days, in my opinion. Momentum still fading. RSI slightly bullish, but fading. And then you can see strong bearish volume here today. Big step up, big selling here happening. And you can see even on the last 15 minute candle of the day, big selling happening at that level, probably triggering some stops as this continues to look bearish going into tomorrow's session. Moving over to the NASDAQ here on the 15 and the daily similar thesis, tested resistance, fell dramatically, tested support held for just a moment got back into this range from yesterday and then fell off at the 144 EMA on the 15 minute chart, broke that 314 level and then closed below 313 here at 312.82. Looking at the daily chart, you can see we're right at the lows going back to April 6th. We had four days of basically sideways price action. Now it looks like we're selling off here. Does look like big money exited this position after the rally that we had. And now we're starting to see that sell off come through. Looking at 310.80 as your next level, 21 EMA on the daily chart, sitting at 311.27. If we do get below there, then we're looking at 307 back at the lows from this previous consolidation. We also have VWAP sitting at 308.41. So a couple of levels to the downside to watch. But right now you have to assume that more bearish price action is coming in tomorrow's session. Looking at the MACD, very bearish, got bearish momentum. RSI, very bearish, got below SMA, coming towards that 50 line. Have to assume that this is going lower. Moving over to the Russell in the Dow here on the four hour chart, you can see similar thesis came up, hit resistance, got rejected, went lower. Momentum looks bearish now. We're below the SMA right at the 50 line on RSI. Overall, looking at that 174.38 level to the downside, we're now below this longer term trend line that I've been watching for a while. And generally, when we get below it, just like we did here early in April, we get a larger sell off. So we'll see what happens if this generates a lower low here from this previous low, then we definitely have to be looking to lower prices here. Moving over to the Dow, definitely the strongest of the group. You can see similar thesis, wick rejection lower here, down a little bit after hours. But we're right at the highs going back to for April. There's still potential that this continues to go sideways and maybe even make a higher low here. Moving over to Apple and Tesla, starting off with Apple here, you can see this rising wedge that we were watching. We overthrew it right here at the end, tested major resistance and then sold off. We're now getting below that lower band here from that rising wedge. And if this continues to break down here, there's a real possibility this goes several percentage points, at least down to the 200 SMA on the four hour chart, sitting down at 154.12. That would be interesting. Major trend support down in that zone. And I think that's a realistic price target for the next couple of days here in Apple. And obviously, whenever Apple is falling, that's going to be very bearish for the S&Ps and the NASDAQ. Deck. You can see we're testing the highs going back to the end of March here. Might find a little bit of support here at the bottom of this consolidation at 158. Otherwise, I'm watching 156.79 and then all the way down here at 154.45. So about five and a half dollars of downside potential in my opinion. Otherwise, looking at Tesla here, similar thesis with the 55 and 144 EMAs here early in the session, sold off pretty much throughout the day, looking to see a retest of that 177.50 level. If that breaks down, there's a lot of room down to the 170.40 level back at this previous low. All the SMAs and EMAs are to the upside here. VWAP is up there as well. Definitely looks bearish on the four hour chart. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish, lots of volume over the last week. And it definitely seems like somebody is exiting a position and that this is about to crater here pretty soon, in my opinion. 
Moving over to Amazon and Microsoft here, I just want to highlight Amazon broke down from this channel. We got a pretty significant breakdown going into yesterday's session, but we threw a huge wick to the upside like everything else and then broke down more dramatically. We're below major support here at 98.96. Next level I'm watching is all the way down here at 96.78, back at these wicks from this previous consolidation. And then all the way down here, 90.63 would be the level that I would watch for a major bottom. Certainly could find support, like I said, in that 96 zone back at these highs going back to the beginning of March. But looking at this chart, you have to expect that 9063 is going to be the level where buyers are likely to recommit, in my opinion, which is a pretty substantial downside, more than 7% over the next few weeks, in my opinion. Looking at Microsoft, you can see this major trend that we've been on. We're right at that level here now. And if we do break down, there's quite a bit of downside potential looking at 270 at the low from this previous consolidation. We still have the 144 EMA and 200 SMA sitting down here around 265 and 276. 267. So quite a bit of downside to those as well. And this clearly looks like we're rolling over. And like I said, if we get below this trend line, that's going to be a major break with some more downside to come. RSI showing weakness on both charts. Momentum on Microsoft, fairly neutral, but momentum here on Amazon, definitely bearish. Moving over to staples and discretionary, you can see here, staples did sell off, did get below 75.40, definitely looking weak, but not nearly as weak as discretionary. Discretionary came up, tested 147, sold off pretty dramatically down to the 200 SMA on the hourly chart. Next level I'm watching is down at 140.97, right around that 141 area. You can see this previous consolidation, the high going back to 14 March get through there. Then we're looking back down at the lows around 138. And then we have wick lows down at 136. So overall, this looks very weak. You can see a clear high, lower high setup. And it seems very likely that this is set to make some lower lows. Moving over to transports on the hour and the 12 hour just for a moment. Similar thesis, sold off throughout the day, looked weak. But we have this trend line here going back to the end of March, a low here at 5 April. And if we get below this trend line, then we have some major selling, in my opinion. Going to make a lower low down to 215. That would be interesting. Take out this previous low, clear double top setup. Definitely looks bearish here on transports going into tomorrow's session. Moving over to semiconductors here on the hour and the four hour, you can see similar thesis, tested resistance, sold off very strongly. But really what I want to highlight here is looking at this chart, you can see a pretty clear left shoulder head, right shoulder setup. And if this neckline gets taken out, which we're at basically right now, you have to expect that this is going to move much, much lower down to probably 142.50 at this next support. And then we have the 200 SMA on the four hour chart sitting at 240 and then major trend support denning sitting at 237. Overall, I would expect this to take out most of these levels and get back into this previous consolidation area. And since semis has been such a strong sector, this is likely to be taking out the markets in my opinion. You can see we're actually down even more here after hours on the hourly chart. Momentum on both charts as well as RSI looks very bearish going into tomorrow's session. Moving over to stocks above their 20-day and 50-day averages here, I just want to highlight the high and lower high setup that we're having on the 20-day. Looks bearish, momentum moving into bearish territory, RSI sitting right at that SMA. If this comes through here tomorrow, then we should expect lower prices, at least a test down to the 51.75 level. But realistic, that level usually gets taken out, and we'll probably see a move down to 36.60. Looking at an example from January, we can see we had that initial move down to support, did find a little bit of a rally, but ultimately we did end up moving lower through that level all the way down to the 16 percentile. So definitely interesting here on the 20 day average, looking for more bearish prices tomorrow. Looking at the 50 day average, wicked that high and then sold off, making a lower low here from yesterday. Not quite as clean of a setup as the 20 day average, but overall still slightly bearish going into tomorrow's session. Moving over to the dollar just for a moment here, you can see we had the big sell off on CPI, tested those previous lows and then held, basically went sideways basically throughout the session. If we're going to go lower here, you would want to see the dollar make a little bit of a rally. That would be interesting. If this does break down here, that might slow the down move that we see coming in most stocks. So keeping an eye on this, if it does break down, that might slow down the down move. But if this does hold here and we start to make a little bit of a move higher, that should spell some bearish prices for equities.
Moving over to JNK, you can see we wicked that upper resistance, sold off strongly, took out the area of highest volume, bearish momentum on the hourly, RSI also bearish. Daily chart not quite as clear. You can see we did finish lower than yesterday's high, but there's a little bit of support levels here that we could still find down around $91.70, $91, and then all the way down here at $98, back into this area of consolidation that we spent basically all of March in this zone. So short-term bearish for sure, but it's going to be interesting to see what we get once we get back down into this zone around $90. Moving over to TLT, similar thesis with these previous highs, fell, found support at the 200 SMA on the hourly chart as well as the daily chart, and then finished pretty strongly into the close. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish. Momentum on the daily chart is fading here slightly, but I would still, based on this support that we found at VWAP, the 21 EMA, as well as the 200 SMA here on the daily charts, I would expect this to go higher. Just think we got a little bit extended, need a little bit of a pullback, and then we should be pushing higher in my opinion. I think TLT is still going to remain pretty strong. Even if we don't get a pause in May, I think we're going to get the pause in June, which should give government bonds a little bit of relief and allow them to rally at least a little bit in my opinion. Moving over to the VIX here. Basically, nothing has changed on the VIX. We continue to chop in this zone, which is honestly a little bit surprising to me considering the move down that we had at the end of day. Got very close to the 20 level early in the session, tested the lows, continued to hold in this zone. Overall, I would expect this to break out tomorrow if we do start to see some lower lows which I do expect to see. And that would give us a nice confirmation, potentially move up to 2250. That would be interesting. And then we have the 200 SMA sitting up around 2345. So a couple of levels to watch the upside. Momentum moving into bullish territory. RSI getting very close to getting over that SMA. Indicators here on the hourly chart, not giving a lot of information because we've been chopping sideways for so long. Moving over to my accounts here, you can see I still profited on my IWM position. I took it off pretty early in the session for about $55 profit on the day. Getting pretty close to break even on the IRA account. That would be nice year to date. But here in my individual account, I got chopped up quite a bit, minus 450. I'd been trading pretty well for the past couple of weeks, so it was about time that I got cut up a little bit. I ended up taking two short calls here into the close, which are in a small profit. I do expect the market to go lower, and I'll continue to sell calls and potentially some covered puts looking at a potential short position going into tomorrow's session. Queues are down already after hours, about 40 cents. I do expect that to continue. The NASDAQ was down more than the SPY, and we talked about how the NASDAQ was underperforming here recently. And I do expect that to continue going into tomorrow's session. So if you're going to get short, you want to go short the weaker product. And right now, that is the NASDAQ. Let me know down in the comment section what you thought of the CPI data. Fed futures or the Fed minutes, which seem to have the largest impact. Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.